Greetings, got another blurbs for you here, and this is another Mac and blurb. Here we have a Apple Power Mac, a G4 400 AGP of some sort. Uh, <laughs> it's, you know, needing a little bit of cleaning up, but otherwise it's in pretty awesome shape from what I can see. And this was a very generous donation recently. I had it in the unboxing video a little while back. And yeah, I was just wanting one of these because uh, I, I've always thought they look cool, but I was actually doing a review on Ute Tower and ran into a situation where I <laughs> wasn't expecting the Mac version to be that much objectively better. So I switched over from doing the Windows uh, port to the Mac original and then realized that my iMac uh, G3 does not have VGA out on it. Some do, mine doesn't. So I just put the word out there. I'm like, hey, does anybody have a, you know, like a power Mac or something around this era that, you know, I could buy or, you know, whatever. And so a bunch of people got in touch, said, here, we've got one. And uh, this is one that showed up. So, uh, yeah, thank you to everyone who made offers on these things because <laughs> that's just awesome. So uh, here's uh, this one. Let's look at it. And because I'm an absolute noob to this series of computers, uh, here's some, some printed words. Uh, apparently this middle, or no, I guess it's the early one. EMC 1810 is what it says in the back. But I guess it's been upgraded because it says later they came with an ATI Rage Pro 128. This one has the 128 Pro in it, so either this paper is wrong or, or this has been upgraded. I don't know. It looks like it's been upgraded from when I saw when I first got it. It looked like the hard drive had been swapped. Or maybe the RAM, I don't know. Definitely the hard disk. But, uh, yeah, let's just jump in here because I don't know what I'm doing. And that's exciting. So we've got an uh, optical drive here. This is not a floppy drive. That is a zip disk drive built in. Yeah, Apple was kind of all in with the zip drives for a moment in time. And on both sides, you got this gigantic Apple logo. <laughs> so uh, this is one of those that's kind of like that graphite uh, look to it. The earlier ones were like white and kind of teal, blue, I don't know, more iMac-like. This is a side that actually opens up for easy access to the internals. We'll get to that here in a second. And look at that. This is the important part for my uses anyway. I was wanting something that would run like OS 8 and 9 that would have uh, enough capabilities to run some late 90s stuff, uh, but also have VGA out. And there we go. VGA in DVI on the Rage 128 Pro video card there. But yeah, got Firewire, some Ethernet, USB, audio stuff, modem. I don't think this one has AirPort installed, so no Wi-Fi. Um, maybe it was a card. I don't know if it came in card form or if it was like a, a daughter board or what. So let's just open it up. This is a little squeaky, so... <laughs> Need to loop that up. But yeah, that's the inside. Look at that. I love how easy this is to just open up and do whatever you want. So this is actually a, like Apple branded RAM or it's got an Apple sticker on it. So it's Apple RAM. I just don't know if it's the original capacity. Uh, this is our ATI Rage 128 Pro. I believe that's a 16 megabyte GPU. And uh, yeah, Western Digital Caviar. This is a 60 gigabyte drive and I believe came with 10 or 20 or something originally. <laughs> well, yeah, literally it says 10 or 20. So yeah, ATA 66, goodness. <laughs> Ooh, ultra ATA, sorry about that. Uh, still not terribly fast. So apparently that is a five speed DVD-ROM. I did take out the little battery down here because uh, I, I think it's probably dead. I mean, whatever, I would replace it anyway. I've got some, I just don't know where it is. Uh, yeah, it's just a little, one of those little, you know, half double A type of batteries. And I suppose that's it. Because, yeah, I just want to turn it on. See if it works. And use it for, like, future things if, if I ever need to show Mac footage from this era. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Yeah, let's plug it in and power it on. So I've got a USB keyboard and mouse plugged in. And uh, 
a rather sacrilegious Packard Bell VGA monitor. Uh, but you know, it's here and it'll do the trick and I kind of find it amusing to run a Power Mac through a Packard Bell monitor from the early 90s. Anyway, start on. Oh yeah. And hopefully we get a display through here. Yeah. All right. And we'll need to do some camera adjustments. And it's one of those, it's like 66.7 hertz vertical refresh. So I had to dial that in and see if we can get this going. Yeah, I'm sure it didn't shut down properly. Who knows when it was last shut down or turned on. Uh, the aspect ratio probably isn't going to be exactly correct on this monitor. It is very much not made for it. But, eh, if we have problems, uh, I'll dig out another monitor really quick. But this will do the trick, I think, for now. Just sort of testing it out, seeing if it works. All right, so we got some things in here. Apparently, got some firmware updates. Of course, the time is wrong. Don't have a battery in there right now, so it's just defaulted to midnight. Is this mouse button not going to do what it's supposed to? Oh, no. <laughs> I was wondering about that. This is um, actually a mouse that I use with the eMachines E1. <laughs> so it might not be configured to work with, with Macs, even though it has a single button. That's irritating. I guess I'll go uh, grab a Mac USB mouse. I've got one here somewhere. Dang it. All right, grab the puck mouse. <laughs> What you gonna do? At least it works. I don't know what's going on with that other one. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we got some files on the desktop here. Um, some firmware update disks. A whole bunch of things down here in the control strip. Apple Talk, CD and DVD things, Energy Saver, Keychain Access. Ah, here we go. VGA Display. I have to change some of the settings out. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's all sorts of things. I'm sure we could swap this over to a more standard refresh rate as well for now uh, these kind of monitors and also be handy for capturing indeed oh so this does have airport or at least it did oh no airport card installed well <laughs> I have to see if I can track one of those down. I'd be kind of curious just to see if I can get it to communicate with other Macs on a local network or something. There we go. Yeah. So we can change it to 60 hertz. That is, <laughs> you can see, it's no longer refreshing correctly to the camera, but it fills up the screen quite nicely for this VGA monitor. I believe we could go to 800 by 600. Yeah, but it's not really. This is a 640 by 480 monitor, just VGA typically. So we're going to leave it on that for now. Uh, I'm going to switch over my camera once again, so, uh, uh, ah, well, we got a little rolling line, but whatever. Let's see if there is anything on here. I'm assuming not. This looks like it's been pretty well reinstalled and then maybe just some firmware updates applied. I don't know if there's a way to check that. So we have Mac OS 9.2.1, 128 megs of built-in memory. Okay. Yeah, there's pretty much nothing on here, so just nice and blank. I don't remember which version of Mac OS worked better with Ute Tower. There were some that led to some corrupt graphics and such. I don't remember if it was this. It doesn't have a virtual PC on here. That's interesting. Hmm. Windows 98 SE as well. All right. Somebody's been doing something on here. <laughs> wow. Okay. Huh. Did not expect this, but here it is. It was a little trippy. Oh, wow. I guess sound and everything. Well, this is an absolute first for me. Running Windows 98 on a Power Mac through a Packard Bell VGA monitor. My apologies for the refresh going crazy on the camera. 
Sound Blaster 16 compatible. What's it doing for display? S3 Trio 64 slash. Okay, whatever. That's that's a thing. What in the world, man? This is kind of cool. This looks all set up, but it doesn't look like anybody's done anything with it. All these you know, folders and whatnot seem to be pretty empty, and this is just a fresh Windows 98 install. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna have to come back to this at some point because this is something I wanted to try out. I guess this would be a great machine to do it. Because yeah, I mean, check it out. <laughs> I have it right there on my shelf behind here. So uh, yeah, Windows 95 Connectix Virtual PC. Key to running PC software on your Mac. And I show the need for speed running on the back of there, which is one thing I've always been intrigued to try out. That was running pretty darn well, so probably would run need for speed. Anyway, that's for another day. Dang, even though I want to dive into that right now. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're going to run some... Uh, Mac OS software. So right here I've got Full Tilt Pinball by Maxis. I got no rhyme or reason to choosing this first. It was just, it was on the shelf and Space Cadet. I guess that's not really as impressive anymore necessarily because we were just running Windows 98, but uh, Space Cadet on a Mac. <laughs> the full version, so in case you weren't aware, uh, this is the full version that you could buy in stores. And so the one that you normally saw with Windows back in the day, that was just a demo. So Cinematronics and Maxis were the people that licensed it out to Microsoft back in the day. I've done a whole video on that, if you're curious. Hmm. I'm not understanding this. It's not letting me start. And it's running like really badly. I'm in 256 colors. Hmm. It's not really working either. This might be one of those OS 9 point whatever issues because this is made for leave OS 7. Yeah, system 7. Well, okay, here's the ball on this one. Yeah, these tab this table's working totally fine. Hmm. Oops, I was not paying attention. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, Full Tilt Pinball. The full version of 3D Pinball Space Cadet with the other tables that suck. Uh, and apparently they don't really want to work on this version of Mac OS, except for this one table. I don't know what the deal is. Oh my goodness. Worst game ever. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Such a wide open lane down the middle of this table. All right. At least I'm keeping the ball out of the middle now. Okay, well, spoke too soon. And Caleb from Blood. Stephen Waits just over there doing pirate voices for this. I don't know, maybe it is. Captain Claw. I can see it. Mmm, a little magnetic bit. How fancy. Yeah. That seriously sounds like him. Yeah, this is, I just, I don't like this table. Never have. <laughs> like, if it weren't for Space Cadet, this would be a pretty underwhelming pack of pinball tables. The uh, sequel's a little better from what I remember. It's been a while since I played that one, but, uh, you know. Uh, I don't care. I don't care. So, don't know why other tables aren't working. <laughs> Just doesn't want to work. 
Like not even the demo wants to work. Look at that. There's just nothing. So yeah, this might be uh, one of those things where I want to try and downgrade Mac OS just to get it to work on. Because yeah, like I said, I was running into some of that with U Tower when I was reviewing it. Yeah, U Tower. Let's give it a shot. I kind of plan to redo this whole system anyway, just start from, from scratch with a fresh install. But I like the fact that Virtual PC is already on there. Although I'll want to do a, a fresh install of that as well. So uh, anyway, let's install the full package. All 94 megs. You got plenty of space to spare. Still one of the most satisfying startup sounds ever. Ah, uh, well, I mean, I guess we can do that. Uh, let's just go to what I know I want to try here. The falls. Yeah, it's totally working, so that's awesome. Okay, let's see what we can make here. Yeah, the little animated construction workers, they are totally not on the Windows version at all. <laughs> ah! Elevator restrictions. That waterfall sound, it just loops forever. So you can turn that off. <laughs> I believe that counts as background music on this one. Yeah. So it's not ambient, it's not environment or whatever, that's background music. So it goes. Oh, I need to do a... Um, <laughs> I don't remember where it is. Yeah, here we go. Tickets. Uh, I think there's already an observatory down there, but we'll need an elevator to get to it. Yeah, there's an observatory. So. This is such a different map from the other ones. I played this one the least by far. So you pretty much just want to build a hotel and tourist trap kind of tower. It's less a tower and more of like an underground facility. There we go. As soon as you do that, people start coming like crazy into this observation area. It's nighttime and then in the morning, tourists, yay. That's pretty much it for this map. <laughs> it's just a lot of management after this. Uh, well, you know, you'll start, like, finding hidden underground things as you dig, so to speak, but... Like that! Spa was found underground. Spa can be placed. And now we can place it. Uh, spa. Wherever that is. I don't remember where it is. Yeah, let's put a coin machine. Everybody loves coin presses. Nope. Put it right there. And a photo booth. Yeah, people don't care about those. All right, where's my spa? It's in here somewhere. There it is. Big old spa right there. Perfect. This is a terrible tower already. I have, I have legitimately screwed up all 
of the traffic. <laughs> All right, where's the eval? It's in here somewhere. Oh. Yeah. Well, anyway, it works. And you can save the tower and reload it, which is one of the things you can't do on the Windows version. Which is just nuts. Like, how did that happen? Also really like the changing of seasons. It's just so much better on this version of the game. Good grief. So anyway, that's kind of the thing that uh, set off my entire search for this kind of a computer. Uh, or this, you know, range of, of Macs with VGA out and such. So this will be perfect for capturing. Uh, so I'm glad it's here. And I'm highly intrigued to connect, connect, to try out Connectix virtual PC. Yes, I want to connect to it and discover its secrets. See if it can indeed run Need for Speed. Maybe that'd be a blurb. Yeah, why not? I want to do a full video on it eventually, but <sighs> what's stopping me from blurbing, you know? So anyway, uh, I suppose that's it for this video on this Power Mac. I just wanted to check, see if it works. It does. I uh, just need to get a battery installed in there. It thinks it's January 1st, 2004. Happy New Year's. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching.